all that sawdust that your collector picks up, that's great for making the shop look better, but it's only cosmetic. These wood shavings aren't going to get in your lungs. It's the fine dust that comes out of those shavings. And there's no single stage collector on the market that will get all of that fine dust. You still have to wear a dust mask. So what's the point of installing a few hundred dollars worth of ducts and equipment just to save yourself having to use a broom? I want something that will keep my air sparkling clean and my lungs cancer free. So I'm going to get a hold of the father of dust collection himself, Bill Pence. He's the guy who dedicated his life and considerable expertise to the study of woodshop dust collection. Anyway, his take is a little controversial, at least to some people, because he says that there really isn't a dust collection system on the market that will handle the fine dust to an appropriate degree, even the expense of cyclones. He spaces that on years of study and in-depth testing on everything from air quality to static pressure to all sorts of stuff I don't even try to understand. The bottom line is he's come up with his own design that he says works, and you can build it yourself. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if you know this, but I like to make everything I can out of wood. Sure, a big cyclone may be easier to make out of something else like I don't know, sheet metal or something, but I find that a lot of woodworkers are just in their comfort zone with wood and they don't want to leave it. So the challenge is to make a cyclone design mostly out of wood that's easy and inexpensive to build. And we're going to do it based on the carefully researched designs of Bill Pets. So the first step is to make that big cylinder that goes above the cone. I was going to use some bendable plywood, but that can be kind of hard to find and a little bit pricey. Then it hit me. Why not just make a giant segmented barrel without the bottom? The process is simple. Decide how many segments you want, remembering that the more you have, the smoother the curve will be. Since a full circle is 360 degrees, you can calculate the proper angle to set your blade by dividing 360 into the number of segments and then splitting that number in half. Once you rip all of your segments, the challenge becomes glue up. Stumpy's favorite method is to tape all of the outer seams. This will hold everything in place as you flip it over and apply the glue. Then you can just roll it up and use some rubber bands or ratchet straps to tighten it all together. An added benefit of the tape is that it prevents glue squeeze out. The result is one big old barrel. Now the size that we made was 18 inches in diameter and I didn't just pull that out of the air. I mean, we're not just making this stuff up as we go along. No, that was based on the testing that Bill Pence conducted. He found that a cyclone must be properly sized to fit your motor and impeller if it's going to work efficiently. He also found that the length and angle of the cone that goes under this sucker is important too. For this system, we're going to use an 11 and a half degree cone. My first plan for making the cone also included bending some type of sheet good. The problem is that any material that's thin enough to bend is probably not going to be strong enough for the cone, especially when you get down to the bottom, which is about eight inches. In fact, I didn't find any wood product that could do that. And I didn't want to do another segmented uh, structure like I did for the barrel on the top because not only is it round, it's also tapered, and that's a lot of complex cutting. The solution, well, it's a stack of plywood rings. Since the cone is 30 inches tall, you might think it would require several sheets of plywood to cut all those rings. But cutting each ring out at a consistent angle allows the use of the center of each ring to be used to make another one further down the cone. The whole thing was made from a single sheet of three-quarter inch plywood. You could use a circle cutting jig, but I just tilted my bandsaw table and did it all by eye. And I also stuck about four or five layers of plywood together with glue uh, because there's a lot of rings on this and I haven't got all day. The result is this giant cone, which is quite beautiful if I do say so myself. What you want, of course, is a really smooth surface on the inside of your cyclone. And the easiest way to get it is to add, of course, some sort of lining. It has to be durable enough because it's going to be constantly sandblasted by the dust during use, but be flexible enough to form uh, really the tight radius at the cone's bottom. 
Now, believe it or not, Stumpy found the solution in the clearance section of Home Depot, some countertop laminate. That and a little construction adhesive, and you've got an airtight liner that will withstand a ton of use. The lining was my genius idea, but the other features of this dust collector that makes it so great, they're based on a little thing called physics. You see, Einstein taught us that airflow is equal to mass plus something else times the velocity of dust squared. To the layman, well, just go look at Bill Pent's website. He has all those calculations there. But I'm going to bottom line it for you, make it a little less mathematic-y. Bill built a cyclone, tested it, tore it apart, built it again. He did it like a hundred times until he came up with two critical changes. These features are easiest to see in this acrylic model that was sent to us by Clearview Cyclones. Clearview is the only company that makes cyclones based on this design that we're using in our wooden cyclone. Now, Mike is going to use this to show you what those features are. The first thing he did was he made changes right here at the inlet. Instead of stopping it right here when it comes into the cylinder, he extended it farther in and angled it downward. Then he added an internal ramp that wraps really all around the outlet of the center. Together, these two unique features force that fine dust downward, increases the blower's efficiency, and dramatically extends the filter life. In short, he changed the diameter and the angle of the cone, he changed the length and the angle of the inlet, and he added an air ramp on the inside. Those changes greatly increase the cyclone's efficiency, which means you can get much more airflow and very fine dust collection. While the cyclone design is critical, blower selection is just as important. You can't put an undersized blower onto a cyclone and expect good dust collection. It just won't work. That's one of the biggest problems that plague even commercial dust collectors. Even the really expensive ones have undersized impellers or underpowered motors. Bill determined that fine dust collection requires a blower generating a thousand cubic feet per minute of airflow. If you spend some time reading through the carefully researched data on his website, you'll come to the conclusion that moving a thousand cubic feet per minute is no easy task. While there's more than one way to do it, the most practical and safest way is with a well-made 15-inch impeller. Of course, you can't spin an impeller that large with a small motor. You just burn it up. Bill recommends five horsepower. Many dust collectors feature one to two horsepower motors with an eight to 10 inch impeller. Despite inflated claims of up to 1,700 cubic feet per minute, once you actually hook them up to your machines, you'll find the actual airflow to be less than half of that. Now I'm all about finding low cost solutions. So I already own a Harbor Freight blower. Why not use that with my new wooden cyclone? Of course, I can't just strap that baby on top. It doesn't have near enough power to run a cyclone. But I figured if one Harbor Freight blower sucked, two would really suck. So, I picked up a second one on Craigslist and started experimenting. How do you connect two blowers together? Well, my first idea was to mount them side by side with a big Y. Turns out, that doesn't work as well as you'd think. A better idea is to mount one to the back of the other. But, it's not that simple either. Even though Harbor Freight dust collectors claim to be two horsepower, realistic tests show them to be closer to 1600 watts, or about 1 1.6 horsepower. If you connect two together in series, the compounded airflow will be in excess of 1,500 cubic feet per minute. That will cause impellers to spin a lot faster, and your motors will be pulling at least 3,800 watts each, at least in theory. In practice, they will quickly burn up, and might even set fire to your workshop. But if you restrict the airflow to just what the blowers can handle, it might protect your equipment while still maintaining the thousand cubic feet per minute of fine dust collection that you require. What we're going to be doing is attaching a couple of digital meters to the motors so that we can monitor how much we're working them. Then we're going to put a blast gate right where they attach to the top of the cyclone so that we can regulate it to just the right amount of airflow. Now remember, this is something that we're experimenting on, not something you should try yourself. If you do it and you burn down the whole neighborhood, don't say Stumpy told you to. I have to say, I was a little worried about what would happen when I tried this out. Don't get me wrong, I'm a guy who owns at least a dozen denim shirts, so I like to live on the edge. But I was afraid if I fired these two blowers up together, it would create some kind of vortex that would suck the mustache off Mike. 
So I asked Bill Pence, and he advised me against it. Actually, he didn't advise me against it, because he probably knew I was going to do it anyway, but he advised you against it. That's because he said that there's the potential for one blower to supercharge the other, causing them to overheat, burn up, maybe even cause a fire. He suggested that if I was going to do it, I carefully monitor the motors and then restrict the airflow to prevent them from overloading. So here's what I did. I really took my precautions here. In fact, I rewired the entire workshop and had a new sub panel installed so that I could have these two blowers on separate circuits. That and I had this new industrial deep fat fryer to put in, but that's beside the point. The real point is the Harbor Freight motors are rated at about 20 amps a piece. So I put a blast gate up on the top so that I could restrict the airflow and keep them at a good 16 to 18 amps. But look what happens when I turn it on. When I turned on the first blower, it ran at about 12 amps. Then when I turned on the second blower, it boosted the first one up to about 15 amps and the second ran at about 11 amps. I was expecting the two to run out of control, but while one did speed up the other, the increase in amperage was minimal, well within the safe limits. Now Bill did say that he knew of examples where people had burnt up their motors. So why didn't it work for them while it did work for me? I don't know, but like any responsible host, that's not going to stop me from some wild speculation. I figure that there are some key differences between my Harbor Freight blowers and the jet blowers in the example that Bill gave me. You see, jet blowers have larger impellers than Harbor Freight blowers. Harbor Freights are about eight inches and the Harbor Freight blower has a five inch inlet instead of six. So it's already restricted a little bit. I'm going to keep monitoring them for a while, use it in the workshop and we'll see what happens. But so far, I am really impressed. This thing sucks. It moves a lot of air, and as long as it doesn't burn down the workshop, I'm gonna be very happy to use my new Franken Cyclone. Let me tell you, I wouldn't hesitate to say it's the most efficient wood cyclone ever built by someone with a name that rhymes with bumpy rubs. Now the real question is, which is better? The Stumpy Nubs Franken Cyclone or the Clearview Cyclone? Come on, let's be serious. A homemade tool is never going to be as good as a commercially manufactured one. I love my Clearview Cyclone, and I'm very happy with my wooden Cyclone. Either one is way better than any single stage collector on the market. In fact, a good way to compare is if you know what is here, when you turn them on, the Clearview has so much suction it actually compresses the 6 inch flex hose. And the wooden Franken Cyclone does the same thing. So the bottom line is this. If you've got the budget and you want the best dust collection you can get, buy a Clearview Cyclone. These babies are awesome. Don't waste your time with one of the other brands that don't have that special technology that Bill Pence developed. Now, if that's not in your budget, you might consider building one of our wooden Franken Cyclones and putting a Clearview blower on the top. Then you'll have the best of both worlds, a great Cyclone design and enough power to run it. And if that's not in your budget, well, you might consider our dual blower option, but if you do, consult an electrician, because I'm not going to be there with a garden hose when you burn the shop down.